Hey, wir sind die Gurke hier am Start auf Lasergurken in dem gratis erreichbaren Minecraft-Server mit der Domain silihuhn.com alternativ auch erreichbar unter der IP 1192.202.137.134 und wir schauen heute weiter den Full Ethical Network Hacking Kurs von Cyber Mentor da sind wir momentan bei 12 Stunden und 53 Minuten für ein bisschen Kontext einfach die folgende voranschauen ähm, das ist jetzt, keine Ahnung, die vierte oder fünfte Folge, in der wir das schauen und die anderen, keine Ahnung, was war das, 12, 13, 14 Stunden, äh, ja, müsst ihr selber anschauen. Genau, dann, uh, without further ado, würde ich sagen, pumpen wir jetzt mal den Talk. And if you're running Nessus, Nessus is gonna do this for you, um, but you should always do this anyway, this is a backup check is if you see SMB open on a network, you should be checking to see if it is exploitable or at least potentially vulnerable to MS-17-010. Uh, this is, like I said, one of the most common and easiest attacks in order to get system. Okay, so here is the script we ran in map-pn-4445. Here's script. And then it spits out, hey, looks like it's vulnerable to this remote code execution, right? And if we were to rescan, we'd probably see more of the end map this time around. Um, and we, did we get it back our, hey, we actually got back our scan for active as well, cool. So, we've got this scan here saying it's vulnerable. So at this point, if we're a pen tester, we've got a couple options, depending on what the, uh, on what the client has told us, right? If the client says, hey, you have free reign, go ahead, do whatever you want. Or if the client says, hey, you know what? Um, before you run any crazy exploits, please let me know. Because uh, an exploit like this may actually take down a system. It may mess things up, depending on what the system's doing. If the system's some sort of critical infrastructure where it can't go down, you might not want to run that exploit, right? Um, so it's important to know on these these RCE exploits that you're probably better off being safe than sorry and you don't want to take something down that's critical and have a client pissed off at you. So you call the client up, the client says, okay, fire away, and that's kind of where we're at here with this exploit. So if we come in and we say, let's go back into Metasploit. And I don't think, I'm thinking, guys, this stream is not going to make it to the live cut. So what we're going to do, I'm probably just going to piece together a couple of my old streams that I have on these topics and throw them in as a, uh, as a you should have been there for the live shit show. And we'll, uh, we'll just call this a special night. So. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh my god, you haven't crafted the table the most. Right, let's say stream. search for oh. And we are looking for uh, exploit Windows SMB MS17010 Eternal Blue right here. Let's see, just copy this bad boy and paste it. This is going to be Richtung, oder? We're going to set the R host to 10.10.40. And then we are going to run this. Now, a couple things to note. First thing to note is this might not work on the first try or the second try. It might take a few tries to actually work. Uh, you know, this is very, very tricky exploit to get running. Of course, it runs on the first time, gets us win. Next thing to note, it puts us right into a command shell. So if you are a Meterpreter fanboy like I am, this is not the best situation. We can approve upon this, right? Um, so this is just a generic payload. Uh, we can say, who am I? And it puts us in as authority system, which is great. Um, but let's control C out of this and just say yes. Hey, and let's drin. say options Schon, again. Ne? This time, we can see the payload option it says generic shell reverse TCP. And we're just going to say, how about we say show payloads 
and see what's available to us. We've got 43 payloads, but I'm going to use a Windows 64 bit interpreter. So let's just say set payload Windows 64 interpreter, and then let's just double tab to see our options. Uh, reverse TCP is probably the best bet here. Always good to double check our options as well. Once we set the payload, we want to make sure that our L host is still holding true. Our L port is also still holding true. Sometimes it resets these down to nothing. Or if you've got an exploit running, which is sometimes the case already on a port, it might default to this 4444 and you might want to set it to something else. All right, so now let's go ahead and run this again. Let's see if we get lucky twice in a row on the first fire. And sometimes we can crash the machine, especially if there's a bunch of us on the same network doing this. Fingers crossed that we don't do that. First one here. So we failed the first one, that's okay. It's going to try again with different groom allocations and see if it works. Is there still an AMA? There is still an AMA. All right, we got a session. So this is a two point concept through both of my points. Uh, don't worry if it fails. You might even get it failing three times through. Um, you might need to rerun it again. So rerun it a couple times to make sure that it's a false positive and is failing. Uh, and also second point here is we can always improve our shell code on these 64 bit machines. So now we've got an interpreter shell. We say sysinfo on this. All right, we've got the 64-bit interpreter. We've got the 64-bit architecture. Perfect. And now we can also look around. One of my favorite things to do is to say hash dump. Okay, we just dumped the hashes for the administrator and the Harris account. Um, so. Like we talked about last week, I would take these hashes and try to pass them around, right? We can use crack map exec, we can try with PS exec in the network, um, to see if we can get in anywhere. So definitely, definitely critical. One of the, um, you know, first experiences I had on a pen test with, with Eternal Blue was getting a hash dump like this and then passing the administrator hash and getting access to pretty much every machine because they were cloning machines. Uh, so it's always worth trying crack map exec and passing the hashes around like we did last week uh, to see where you have access to. Of course, we can shell into this and we can look around the file system. You know, we can say, uh, we can CD to whoever users and then say dir and see who's in here. Okay, administrator's in here. Who does administrator, what do they have on their folders, right? Let's say dir. Okay, maybe go to the documents. You know, you'll come up with, with ways to search for sensitive files and have keywords and stuff like that, but these are the things you're looking for. Like, what can I find on this system? What kind of access do I have? Um, you want to see, you know, who it's talking to, what the ARP table looks like. Uh, of course, there's not going to be another one in this network that it's chained to, but you want to see that through the art. Um, you want to say route print and see what the routing table looks like. Uh, Netstat's another good one to look at. So if we go netstat-ano, we can look at all the connections that are coming in and going out. Right, so we talked about it a little bit last week about dual homed machines. Um, for example, if this PC for some reason had two NICs, 
and one NIC was sitting on a 10.10.10 network and the other one was sitting on 10.10.11, for example, um, we might be able to see that the 10.10.11 is talking to a whole different network that we had no access to. And we're going to talk about that in more depth next week when we talk about um, pivoting. So that's a pivoting situation where we want to go into a, uh, you know, a, a different network. How will we investigate these higher ports? So these higher ports, if you look at what we're doing, um, like the 4444 here, those are established from us um, connecting. So we opened a port on their end. Uh, these other ones, who's to say what they are? Uh, we'd have to see, you see a lot of high ports like this going out of like 443 and other, you know, like internet addresses. Uh, these could be other people's shells for all we know. They may have just put in like other, you know, it's hard to say without being able to, to go into the machine. So we want to look at those things. Um, of course, control C. Um, we can load some extra modules as well. We can load incognito, which is my favorite. And we just say list tokens dash U for user. Okay. And if we're on a domain network, we may catch a domain administrator who had logged into this account. Remember we talked about the tokens and how they worked last week. Uh, obviously there's no domain account here to log into because we're not doing that. Uh, but something to look for. If we're using 64-bit architecture, we can load Kiwi. Kiwi is awesome. One of the best commands is creds all. Again, we talked about this last week. No creds here, but if we type in help, um, there's more than just the creds all. We can talk creds Kerberos. Uh, golden ticket attacks come through this. We can do Wi-Fi lists if there was a Wi-Fi profiles. Uh, so there's a lot of things that we can we can get just off of Kiwi. Uh, so these are some things to look for, things we've talked about. It should all be coming together, right? This is just a very, very simple exploit. But the post-exploitation is really the most important. Like we, we own this machine in two seconds and there's a reason it's on the top five lists. Like I said, it's on most major networks. Um, since we owned it so fast, we need to be able to make sure we enumerate around everywhere, right? Uh, we're looking for sensitive files, those hashes, where can those hashes lead us? Can we impersonate a domain admin? What kind of net commands can we get access to, et cetera? So um, every little computer has a piece to play in the final picture. It's just seeing how that piece fits into the puzzle. What's the difference between Mimikatz and Kiwi? Kiwi is a 32-bit, right? So if you say load, or sorry, Mimikatz is 32-bit. If you say load Mimikatz, it's going to say, hey, you're loading on to newer architecture, right, OS. So we want to actually use it on um, some older architecture. Kiwi is the newer and better Mimi Cats. All right. New is so always better. We're going to yeah. call this one a day. This one was just going to be a 20-minute box. That's turned into 45 minutes. Again, I'm very sorry, guys. Uh, even I struggle, you know, so... Um, let's go ahead and kill this one and let's go ahead and talk about the results from this machine here called active now active is one of the favorite boxes I've encountered in the hack the box labs because it is realistic it's very realistic um, so if we look at it there are some signs that what we're up against is likely a domain controller uh, you can see that it's running DNS it's got Kerberos, which is an authentication system. Um, we've got 139 open. We've got LDAP open for Active Directory, right? That should be a pretty big sign that we're running a, a domain. And the domain here is active.htb. Uh, we can go through all the ports here. It's very, very um, similar to that, like I said, of a domain controller. So when we see this, we look down here, SMB, and common to domain controllers, SMB signing is enabled and required. Uh, most of the SMB relay or the NTLM relay is done other than domain controllers. Sometimes you're lucky and it's turned off, but Microsoft got smart and enabled that for uh, Windows Server. I don't even know what versions onward, but it's as of late been uh, running this just fine. 
So this looks like 2008, so God knows how long it's been doing that. Um, and other things that we could look at, right? If we, we can maybe dump LDAP information, that's a little bit more advanced and outside of the scope. Uh, I've seen that done in some hack the box without credentials, but typically you're not gonna have access to that without credentials. Um, but that's something to, to think about and to study. Like if you get this box back on an assessment in say, for example, it's the only box, you're gonna wanna look through each single one of these ports and say, what's interesting to me, right? Uh, the first thing that's always interesting in, in my behalf is always 445 and 139 because the more time you spend in pen testing, the more time you have to realize that SMB is behind a ton of exploits. Um, so do note that uh, it looks like they may have some sort of HTTP API going on. Uh, I would investigate everything that says it's open and probably not TCP wrapped. So definitely worth looking into. So here, first thing we're gonna look into is going to be 445. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to go in and use a tool called SMB Client. So it's gonna look something like this. We're just gonna say SMB Client. We're gonna do dash L. I think it stands for list. Don't ask me what it stands for, I don't really know. And we're gonna list out the contents of the directory. It's gonna ask for a password. We're gonna try hitting enter. And it says anonymous log is successful. This is a finding. Uh, so this finding is that we shouldn't have anonymous login, right? You shouldn't know what sort of SMB shares are out there. So we've got these, these shares here. We're able to see those. We would absolutely list this on a report. Now what we can do with these shares depends on how critical you know this finding becomes. Right now it's just a low finding, close up the anonymous login. So from here, we'd wanna see what folders we can actually connect to. Now the juiciest folders might be something like the C share or the remote admin. We can see if we can connect to those folders. So to connect to a folder, we just say SMB client, we do the character escaping just like I'm doing here, and we'll just say something like admin dollar sign, and try to connect, hit enter, and then it says access denied, even though we have anonymous login successful. So I'm gonna cheat a little bit and tell you that the one that works here is the replication folder. We hit enter, enter again, we are successful. Okay, so we have an SMB login here. We are in this replication folder. Now if we type help, we could see a full list of commands of what we can do. Um, it's very, very similar to Linux. We can say ls and see what's in here. Okay, it looks like there's a folder called active.htb. We could say cd active.htb, ls again. Okay, policies, scripts, dfsr, private. Um, and it's called replication, so it looks like it's probably a backup of something, right? Uh, and a backup of what? Who knows? But we can figure that out for ourselves. Let's CD back a, a share. Instead of digging through all these files, there's an easier way to do this. So let's just say we want to download all the files and folders that are here. Well, we're going to want to do that uh, with something called mget. But before we just do an mget, we're going to say recurse on because we want to download all the folders recursively. And to save some time, we're just going to turn off prompts. So we're just going to say prompt off. And now all we have to say is mget with an asterisk like this. And it's going to start downloading stuff. Okay, and we only grabbed like eight files here. If we look through the files that we're grabbing, looks like we grab gpt.ini, gpe.ini, a .inf file, um, and then I see, okay, I see this groups.xml. This is something that is really well known to me, um, and this is something that is likely going to be pay dirt for us. So let's explore what's in the groups.xml, and then we'll talk about why it's so relevant. So I'm just gonna say bye, 
Okay, I guess there's no buy here. Uh, just control C. If we LS in this folder or we say um, CD, I think it should just be active. It should have the same folder structure. So we say active policies. Uh, actually, this would probably be better to just do in a GUI form documents, downloads, active. And we say um, it was policies, policies, 3, 1B, machine preferences groups. And we open up this groups.xml. Okay. So it might be a little hard to see. So let's talk about what this GPP is, um, this groups.xml is. So groups.xml is related to something called GPP. Uh, it's also group policy preferences is what it stands for. An easy way to remember this on a pen test, if you ever listen to rap, uh, there's a song called Are You Down With OPP? Well, just think to yourself, are you down with GPP? And make sure that you search for GPP, right? So you've got this group policy preferences. And what it did was it allowed domain admins to create domain policies using embedded credentials, right? So the credentials are right here in this file. You see username active.htv, and then we've got services tgs here, this ticket granting service. And we'll talk about the ticket granting services here in a second. Um, and then you see this thing called the C password. This is what we're after. And there's actually a great article by Rapid7 uh, that I've got up here. It's called Pen Testing in the Real World Group Policy Pwnage. It talks a little bit about GPP and what it does, uh, probably better than the words I could put it into. But basically, you were able to store the uh, username and password, and you created it right for for an account to do some sort of action, say file sharing or whatever it is through group policy. Uh, this was up until a few years ago. So these keys just stored in this sysball folder, right? And what you can do is there is actually a uh, Metasploit module, which I want to show you. We won't use it tonight because we have no need. We've already got the file. But I run this on every single internal assessment, and you will not believe how many times the uh, C password or the GPP, it just shows right up. So if you search GPP, does the groups.xml file exist on an active domain? It exists on some active domains. This is for older domains, but sometimes even when they migrate, they leave that file in there. And we're gonna talk about that too. Um, so if you see the post windows gather credentials, so as long as we have some sort of access on a session, we could say use post windows gather credentials GPP. Look at the options. So we need a session, right? It could be a PS exec, whatever session we get. But once we have a session, we can run this. We may be able to get the uh, a domain administrator password just from this. Uh, so very, very important to try to run this on uh, any, any internal <coughs> assessment that you can. So another thing to note though, we have set this up in the past for clients uh, as what's called a canary account. Basically, what we're doing is we put in an account that has a GPP or C password, and it's never been used, but it is sitting there as a, uh, a honeypot, right? So when an attacker is in your network and they're looking for this low-hanging fruit because GPP is low-hanging fruit, we say, okay, they find the file, they see the username credentials, and as soon as those username credentials get activated, then we know an attacker's on the network, right? Uh, so just because this is low hanging fruit, your competition might be using it as bait. Uh, so always think about that as well, but typically on pen tests, uh, it's something that we'd grab right away. Okay, so let's talk about how we can exploit what we just found. So let's open up this file, 
we've got the C password here. I want you guys, if you're following along, to copy the C password. And what we're going to do is say GPP decrypt. It's built into Kali. And then we should just be able to paste this password here. We get a warning, but don't worry about it. The cipher is deprecated. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to copy this. And we are going to, let's just paste it somewhere that we can have it, right? Okay, so what this means now is we have a account. We've got this um, domain here, active.htb. We've got this uh, service, ticket granting uh, service account here. So, what can we do with this? Well, we can use, again, crack map exec, try to push it around, right? See, uh, see what we can do with it. We can try to go back into the SMB client, try to log in with this account, see if we can get into that admin folder. Um, you know, I could use PS exec on this machine. That was the first thing I, I tried when I did active was to say, okay, does this have access to uh, to the share folder and administrative privilege? So I tried PSExec. PSExec doesn't work either. But be thinking about the same process for everything you're doing. So PSExec, um, you know, crack map exec, et cetera. Whatever we can do with these credentials, we're going to try to get in anywhere and everywhere that we can. Well, we're in a one box network right now. So um, another tactic that we're going to talk about and tactic number four on this list is Kerberos Ding. So we are going to talk Kerberos Ding. Let me minimize everything and bring out my handy dandy pen so I can explain this as best as I can. There's probably going to be somebody out there who is a uh, domain guru and going to correct me on this because you people like to correct me all the time when I say something wrong. Uh, so, sorry in advance if I if I mis misquote this, right? So, let's talk about my best interpretation of what Kerberosing is. And before we can do that, let's talk about Kerberos. So, Kerberos is just an authentication protocol, right? It uses tickets. Uh, so it's using tickets as a form of communication and authentication. So let's assume a situation, and this is how it typically is. That is a huge fucking thing. All right, let's clear that. Let's try that again. All right. We've got this machine here. This is our server. Our server is also considered a KDC. Right? It's a key distribution center because we're giving out keys. All right. We also have another computer here. We'll just call that the client, right? So we've got the client and the server. Well, let's say the server or the client wants to uh, authenticate, right? So it's going to come to the server and it's going to say, hey, server, you got those tickets? Can I get a ticket? It's going to ask for a TGT, a ticket granting ticket. Now, the server is going to check the credentials, and if the credentials are good, it's going to send back uh, over encryption, which is called TGS, Ticket Granting Service, is going to encrypt a secret key, remember, key distribution center, it's going to send back a secret key that gets stored on the client. So, this client has a ticket stored here until the ticket expires. Now let's add a pawn to this story. Let's say that there is a service that we want to connect to, right? Come down here. We'll just call this service. And a service can be whatever we want. It could be SQL, it could be antivirus, you name it. But let's just call this a SQL <laughs> service. Okay. Services have what we call SPNs. These are service principal names. So to connect as a client, we need to ask for permission to connect to the service. We need to know, we say, hey, the SPN, I've got my ticket, I'm going to take this, and can I, can I please connect to this SQL service? And 
we uh, get a session key back from the server if we have the credentials right, or the ticket at least, to connect. So the thing to know about Kerberosing is that with any valid ticket or TGT, we can request for a TGS ticket uh, for this SPN. So lots of acronyms, right? If you're a military, former military, you're probably following along just fine, uh, but there is a lot of little letters here. Just know that if we have a valid ticket, we can request uh, via the SPN here, uh, at least to attempt to get a TGS, right? So we're gonna see what that looks like. There's actually a tool that does that for us. How did I do you domain people? Did I do okay? All right, let's pull this back up. And this is part of the impacket. Uh, the impact it, right? The whole thing we've been using this entire time. What we installed in the beginning, I told you would be important. This toolkit. So, impact it is awesome. So, let's go ahead and locate what we're going to be running. It's called git, if I could type, git user spns. You see we have a few. The one we installed in the beginning of the course was the opt impacket. I'm gonna use that one. So I'm gonna cd to opt impacket examples. All right, so now we ls. There's a bunch of stuff in here, but we're gonna be using that git user spns.py. We're just gonna say Python git user spns.py. All right, first things first, we need the account. The account was active.htb, and it was service, ticket granting service, right? Next, we need to say DCIP. We need to know the IP of the domain controller. Well, lucky for us, this is the domain controller. And last, we need to request the ticket. So we're going to request the ticket. Ah, we need a password. So. We come back into here, we copy this guy, we paste, and we get this wonderful thing back here. So we see that we have captured something here for the administrator, right? We've got this long hash, and it's a KRB5TJS. So, what can we do with this? Well, we can take this offline and try to crack it and see what happens. And we're gonna do just that. So, have your handy dandy hash cats ready. I'm going to load mine up now, give me one second. As I am not prepared as you guys are. Okay, so we're gonna run hashcat. We're gonna say dash dash help. We are looking for KRB5, which is 13100, if I am not mistaken. Here you go. It's under network protocols, 13100, Kerberos 5, TJS, TGS, sorry. Okay, so we know our module is 13100. If you've been following along week to week, you should know how to run Hashcat now, right? So Hashcat64.exe. We're going to do a module of 13100. I named this file kerberos.txt and all I did was copy this entire line all the way down to the end, put it into a file. I'm going to run this through RockU. I've got a brand new 2080 Ti that we're going to push this through. I haven't actually run any hash cracking on yet, so let's just hit enter and see what happens. And 
and it took us not that long at all. So we went through, where is it? 77% of the list, and the list is 14 million passwords long, so that's pretty good. All right, so it's cracked. You can see that it's cracked. Ticketmaster 1968 is the credential. So we're gonna take that, and I'm going to paste it in here. Okay. And now let's load up Met, uh, Metasploit. We actually have it loaded. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna search for PS Exec. We're gonna use exploit Windows SMB PS Exec. It's number 11 on my screen if you don't see it. Let's talk options. Okay, so we've got SMB domain. Remember that is active.htb. SMB user is administrator. SMB pass is that ticket master pass. It would be helpful if I hit the word set in front of that. Let's try running it, see if we get lucky. I'm kind of indifferent on the, ah, I never said in our host. Sorry guys. All right, let's try again. See if we get lucky. Okay, so it's like a PowerShell. Let's look at our targets. So we ran automatic. Let's try a native upload instead. So we see that we authenticated, we uploaded the payload, it's creating, it's deleting, and it's hanging. Let's try target three. Might have to go back to target two and pray. Oh, my L host is not good. Good, good job on that one. So, as pointed out, thank you very much. The L host got pointed to my machine and not not the Kali machine or the uh, the IP address that's here. So let's set the L host. If yours did that, also set yours. I think mine's 36. Oh no, it's 21 now. All right. So set target back to two and run again. There we go. Thank you, Techno Bro. All right, so we've got a shell. Sysinfo on the shell, 64-bit interpreter, 64-bit architecture. Get the UID. We are authority system. We have full access on this PC. Again, same concept here, right? We would load incognito, list tokens, see what tokens are out there. We would do a hash dump dump the hashes, pass them around, see what information we can get from that. Um, this is one of the more realistic boxes, like I said, in terms of uh, teaching you two, um, two common internal tactics. Kerberosing is, is obviously one of the more common that's gonna lead you somewhere, but a GPP C password is something you should be checking on pretty much every assessment, because that does lead to easy win. Um, you would be surprised how many companies have their passwords stored, or even if they've migrated or updated somewhat, uh, in an older password that is similar to what their current password is. So any password that you can get is absolutely relevant. So with that being said, and this stream being all kinds of screwed up, we still finished 11 minutes past schedule, so that's not terrible. 
Um, I am going to change my screen over to IRL and we can we can talk shop for as long as you guys want to probably hard stop at 10. Uh, let's go ahead and actually just get started. My dogs are going crazy so that's awesome. Uh, I forget what buttons. There we go. Welcome, welcome. Unless you want to see my pretty face, we can do, uh, we can do that. There you go. That's not too bad. Welcome to the last episode of Zero to Hero. We are week 11. You have made it to the end. So we're going to do some quick housekeeping. We're going to talk file transfers. Uh, we're going to cover some cool little tricks that I like file transfer wise. Uh, maintaining access, pivoting, and cleanup. We are going to do a lab on pivoting. We're going to talk maintaining access and talk cleanup, and I'll get into that and the reasonings why. Uh, then we're going to cover legal, we're going to cover report writing, and finally we're going to end on career advice. So we'll talk some legal documentation. I'll cover that example report that I put out. If you haven't seen it, now's the time to talk about it. And then I'll give you my career advice, tips, etc. Tip my hat and sign off. Uh, so, we'll do Q&A, AMA at the end. Let's just go right into the housekeeping. So, like I said, this is the last stream. Uh, immediately after this stream, I will be breaking some protocol and I will be uploading the stream onto YouTube. Uh, there's a 24-hour waiting period. I'm just going to YOLO out. Um, I'm also going to be putting it on the Zero to Hero pen testing on the CyberMentor.com. So, if you're looking for that repository, it's on there as well. The course will be full. Uh, and we'll be done. Tonight, 30 minute AMA. Two reasons why. I am on three and a half hours sleep. I want to party so bad with you guys, but I have a flight at six o'clock in the morning. Um, as of just a few minutes ago, I got a text message saying that they may have canceled the flight. So that's great because we've had this book forever. Um, my wife's handling that right now. The flight doesn't say that it's canceled online, but the text message said it was. So she's on the phone dealing with Southwest Airlines right now. Um, so, as of right now, potentially leaving at 6 in the morning, so I'm drinking my monster on three and a half sleep. You guys ask me all the time, how do I get all the work done? It's because I never sleep. Uh, so don't, don't be like me. Uh, definitely try to get some sleep. So because of that, we're going to push the drinking game into next week. Next week, we'll just have a super, super chill chat. Uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll drink, we'll hack things, we'll, we'll have fun. I'll try to pick a different topic that we haven't covered before. Uh, something a little different, and we'll just have some fun with it. Uh, so, other than that, a favor to ask of you guys. If you guys are enjoying the course, if you enjoyed your journey, please do consider leaving me some feedback. Um, you could leave it for me on Discord, on LinkedIn, on Twitter. I would greatly appreciate that. Many of you already have, and that's awesome. Um, full disclosure, I am planning and to do this course again uh, in a paid version, which is just gonna include some more updated material. It's gonna have an actual lab built out to where we can VPN into it. Um, so you guys got the free edition. Free edition covers pretty much everything I wanted to cover. The lab's just gonna be a little bit more upgraded. Uh, and I, I would love to use some testimonials if you guys don't mind that. So um, that's my only ask of you guys. Other than that, tell a friend, say hey, you know, uh, I, I enjoyed this course. You guys should check it out on YouTube or whatever. That would be great. Uh, so other than that, let's go ahead and just dive into our lesson. So I have actually put that in the wrong spot. We're going to talk file transfers first, then we'll talk maintaining access. <coughs> uh, so if you are looking to take the course, the course will have discount for students, first responders, and military vets, military active, doesn't matter. Um, you just got to let me know ahead of time. And um, we can work it out. It's going to be 20% discount if that's, if you guys want to retake this course. Uh, but anyways, so let's go ahead and talk file transfers. So tonight we're going to do file transfers with Linux. Typically Linux file transfers include... Uh, wget so we're going to look at wget and then we're going to look at uh, some windows tools we're going to look at http ftp metasploit cert util sick in the minds already getting ahead of me with um okay leute um ja dann würde ich sagen was das mit dieser episode 
Ähm, wir sind jetzt bei, oh nice, 13 Stunden und 37 Minuten. Lied! Ähm, ja, bei dem Video Full Ethical Hacking Kurs Network Penetration Testing for Beginners 2019 von The Cyber Mentor. Wir schauen uns aber auf dem Free Code Camp org channel an ähm, link ist wie immer in der beschreibung äh, der minecraft server hier ist laser gurkenland der gratis erreichbare server mit der äh, enorm hohen uptime ja genau garantie für, für lange geplante uptime äh, und verfügbarkeit und immer slots frei wie man hier sieht ist hier kein mensch da deswegen könnt ihr hier immer entspannt vanilla spielen Erreichbar unter der IP 149.202.127.134. Momentan äh, zeigt auf dieser IP-Adresse noch die Domain sillyhuhn.com, unter der ihr auch äh, auf den Server kommt, ähm, wie lange äh, lang das noch bleibt oder ob die IP oder die Domain wechselt. Das kann ich leider nicht äh, garantieren, ähm, weil, weil ich nicht weiß, was in einigen Jahren sein wird. Ich weiß nur, dass noch in einigen Jahren dieser Server weiterhin betrieben wird. Ähm, alles klar, ja dann äh, sehen wir uns in der nächsten Episode dieser Dauerwerbesendung. Bis dann.